pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we have no approval of minutes for tonight, so we'll move on to a motion to accept the agenda as presented. So moved. Is I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Any abstentions? Motion carries. And the next item, I'm going to ask uh, Mary Dickerson to come forward. We have some very special awards tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, every year for the last, now I believe this is our 10th year, we have been doing annual Business of the Year Awards. Um, and as a commission, the Economic Development Commission recognizes various people and businesses within our community that make a huge impact. So this year, we sort of did things as twins. There was no way to pick just a single business or no way to pick a single person, so we have selected two businesses that are very interconnected and two people that are very important to our community. So the first that I would like to um, read to you and present is our 2018 Businesses of the Year. Elwin is our chairman. Would you like to come up and present this? So our 2018 Businesses of the Year are the Connecticut Training and Consulting Institute and Emergency Resource Management. For 25 years, Connecticut Training and Consulting and then Emergency Resource Management were two businesses that continue to make Portland look good. Both are owned and operated by Bob Ziegler, and it is his expertise that is integral to their successes. In awarding the 2018 Business of the Year Award, there was no way to separate these two, and so the Economic Development Commission honors both. It is amazing what a big impact a small business can have. Connecticut Training and Consulting and Emergency Resource Management allow many companies to operate because they simply would not be able to do business without the services that are provided by them. Connecticut Training and Consulting provides required training for public safety, corporations, and healthcare institutions, while Emergency Research Management provides staffing for ambulances to assist volunteer forces throughout Connecticut and New Jersey. That impact is in large part to Bob's expertise with more than 38 years of active EMS and 25 years of fire service experience. He's a certified EMS instructor and licensed paramedic, a certified EVOC instructor, state certified fire service instructor, safety officer and fire officer, is an American Heart Association CPR instructor and trainer, and an OSHA certified instructor. Bob's influence on the industry cannot go unnoticed. He has served as president of the Mid-State Regional EMS Council, as a board member of the Eastern EMS Council, a member of the State EMS Advisory Board and their legislative subcommittees, the Emergency Planning Committee, and chairs the Public Information and Education Committee. He was recently appointed as a principal to the NFPA 450 Technical Committee for EMS and was also a member of the ESF 8 EMS Strike Team Committee. Just a few of the awards that have been received by these companies includes a 2013 Distinguished Achievement Award from the Commissioner of Public Health and the Director of Emergency, Director of Offices of Emergency Medical Services, the 2009 Galuli Lawton Award for Commitment to Excellence in Pre-Hospital Care and EMS Services, the 2008 Humanitarian Award presented at Waterbury Hospital, and the 2002 American Heart Association Heart Saver Award. For five years, from 2013 to 2017, Emergency Resource Management was named a top Connecticut workplace, and I fully expect that we will see them at the AquaTurf again in the fall of 2018 to accept that award again. It is my honor and the honor of the Economic Development Commission to present this award to Connecticut Training and Consulting and Emergency Resource Management. And Bob, while you were here, um, Christy Carpino was here earlier and she had presented a certificate on behalf of her and Senator Art Linares with the appreciation of the Connecticut General Assembly for all that you do for Portland. Would you like to say a few words? <laughs> sure you can. Uh, just uh, thank you very much for this, uh, uh, for this honor. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, pretty much uh, have dedicated my career to this uh, this industry and this endeavor and uh, it's nice to see that uh, hard work pays off and uh, I, I appreciate uh, the recognition thank you
Well done. Thank you. Our second award goes to two very special people, and um, we have the Entrepreneurs Award. So many people think of Dairy Queen as a corporate enterprise, but Dairy Queen was actually started as a family business in 1938 by a father and son, and I think it's kind of unique that we have a father and son here who work together every day, too. Our Entrepreneurs Award is being presented to a couple who embrace family, and that's Michael and Rosemary Cassetta. Mike and Rosemary didn't start out in the food business. They owned a hardware store. And for 20 years, they sold nuts and bolts and tools and paint and things that didn't make people smile as much as ice cream. <laughs> when big box stores came and began to put pressure on the small independent retailers, they looked to trade industries and communities, and to Portland's benefit, they ended up here. When you think of an entrepreneur, the first thing that often comes to mind is innovation and technology. But being an entrepreneur is really about hard work, dedication, and customer service. You will find Mike, Rosemary, and their son Paul at Dairy Queen seven days a week. There is no job that is too small or unimportant for them to do themselves, and no customer is a stranger because everyone there is a friend. Dairy Queen is often the first job for many adults in our community, and these young people are extremely lucky. When I spoke with Mike about this award and told him that he had been nominated by the family of one of his employees, he related to me with much pride how he and Rosemary enjoy watching their young employees grow. Training includes all tasks from something simple as how to sweep the floor to preparing Dairy Queen signature meals and desserts. And then Mike asked me rhetorically, how can you get a job done right when no one takes the time to show you how to do it? And Paul, their son, had said to me, to this day, they feel that each and every employee that comes to the door is part of their responsibility to teach them the important life lessons and give each employee the time to educate them on what it takes to succeed, not just in Dairy Queen, but also in their future endeavors. They are proud to watch their employees master new tasks, find the confidence to speak with customers, and more importantly, grow as individuals. Paul said it's the community that gave them the chance to be part of their family, and they have a responsibility to return that favor. They are very much part of Portland's family. After every basketball, baseball, or soccer game, whether we win or lose, every band concert, whether it's a warm day or a cold day, or a birthday or an anniversary, Mark and Rose, Mike and Rosemary are part of the families of Portland. So it is with very, um, on behalf of the Economic Development Commission, we are very proud to present them with the 2018 Entrepreneurs Award. have a citation that Christy had brought to them earlier and this is from our state representative Christy Carpino and Senator Art Lenars on behalf of the entire General Assembly for you to thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you. And thank you. Congratulations. <clears throat> to wonderful businesses in our town. Um, ones that have given for so many years and I want to thank Bob and Mike and Rosemary and your entire family, because I know um, each and every one of the members of your family are part of your business. And I would say, by extension, as Mary pointed out, um, I think every person in our town is part of your family. And that's the way you treat us. And we really appreciate that deeply. So, nice job, Economic Development Commission. The members are here tonight, along with our gracious host, Mary Dickerson, who does a wonderful job in recognizing um, the wonderful businesses that we have in our town and how important you are to us. So on behalf of the full board and the town of Portland, congratulations. Anyone else want to say anything? Anybody else all set? Okay. Then, um, we will move on to the next item on our agenda, which is public comment. 
and if our guests needed to go and <laughs> have fun <laughs> and celebrate, that's fine. You're welcome to stay, but the rest of the meeting is business. Good night. Good night. We'll take a brief respite. Good night, Greg. Thanks for coming. You're all bored. Yeah, I know. I <laughs> you miss it. No, you still go. I go when I can. I do, I do enjoy it. <laughs> I, thought, I thought they were going to sit through it. <laughs> you know, you can stay if you want to. <laughs> oh, and I thought you'd sit through it. How's the asparagus? Thanks so much. Good job. Come <laughs> Well, that was very, very nice. Any uh, public comment tonight? <coughs> Excuse me. Any appointments to boards and commissions tonight? <coughs> I have none. I don't think I've received any for tonight. <coughs> so we'll move on to appointment of public works director. Um, after 23 years, as you may know, our um, director, Richard Kelsey, has decided to retire at the end of the month of May. And um, we want to thank officially uh, Richard Kelsey for all of the very hard work and dedication to our town and in keeping us um, safe and secure. It's an important job. Um, we have recruited for a new director of public works and we had many applications of which uh, we interviewed, I believe, seven individuals <coughs> and one rose to the top. Um, while we had excellent candidates, and I can tell you every one that we interviewed would be an excellent uh, public works director. As I said, one rose to the top, and that is uh, Bob Shea. And Bob Shea is uh, currently in a uh, business. He owns, co-owns a business outside of Portland, and he has served there for, I believe, uh, two and a half decades dedicated to that service as well as having worked in private industry. He has a bachelor's degree in engineering from Central Connecticut State University. Has also a dedication to public safety and the fire service in particular. And is highly trained in OSHA as well as safety and all of the requirements that a chief of the fire department must have. And I am pleased to present by charter to the full Board of Selectmen the nomination of Bob Shea to be the next Public Works Director. And is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Seconded by Ben. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Congratulations. <laughs> And I've asked uh, uh, Mr. Shea to speak with us tonight. <coughs> so thank you. Those who know me, which it's nice to, I know everybody on the board. Um, as Susan started, it's, it's so important to thank Rick um, after all these years, he has spent an awful lot of time and invested a good portion of his life um, making some big changes in town. And infrastructures and safety, um, I've had the pleasure of working with Rick for 14 years um, as chief of the fire department. Um, there's some big shoes to fill, but um, I'm looking forward to the challenge and I can't thank you enough for giving me that opportunity. I spent uh, 30 years, 28 of those years, um, managing a family business, a manufacturing company, uh, working as a manufacturing engineer. And during that time, I, I think my biggest accomplishment and that I'm very proud of is I worked very hard um, to promote a culture, um, to promote um, a sense of motivation or to motivate my employees to work together um, and to instill a sense of ownership on what they do each and every day. Um, I've been very lucky to have been rewarded 
um, with that culture, I would say, that I've, you know, tried to instill over all these years, uh, which has turned into a very successful um, time uh, during those years, you know, working as that engineer. So that is something that I think is, is very important with any success for any business, and I hope to continue that here. I know, and I'm lucky to know most of the employees that I'll be working with, that'll be working for me, and I know how um, skilled they are, how qualified and knowledgeable they are in their jobs, and I'm going to need that um, in the very beginning as I transition, and I hope to use those as well as the expertise of the supervisors to move my you know, plan forward. So I'm really looking forward to working with all the departments in town. Many of them I know. Many of them I worked with before in a different capacity. Um, so I hope to continue to do that. So I thank you again for the opportunity. It's a big challenge uh, to look forward to, but I like those. Um, I promised my wife that I'll be home more, maybe. You know, th this changes, this is a big life change for me um, in the fact that I've driven 80 miles a day for 28 years. Um, so it's a 14 or 15 hour day, so I'm looking forward to investing some of that time back into the community. Um, and I will continue um, if my membership, uh, which they stated last night that they would like to continue in the chief's position, um, in, at least until the end of my term, which I think is actually going to be a little easier. So um, I hope to do that as well. well. Congratulations, Bob, and congratulations, Liz, and thank you both for <coughs> being dedicated to thank accept you. this position. Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, I've prepared a letter um, that I'm asking uh, Bob to start the last week of May. So there'll be some overlap with the current director, so Rick and he can uh, be able to go over uh, things in the office. Fortunately, our public works director currently lives in town and has said he would be available to assist in any way that he can. So I think it should be a very successful transition, but it will be the end of May that uh, he has also indicated he'll come in on, on and take time off from his other job to become acclimated. Um, there is a day of the week that he is able to um, <clears throat> come in, and I will be sharing with him contracts and um, pro projects and things that are going on. So he'll begin to familiarize himself on his own time. He's volunteered to do that, to come in on his own time to do some of the research that he wants to do. True to form. I was, I was going to ask Bob. Are you are you giving up your your other job or your business? Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's it's a limited partnership, so I will be doing that, and you know how that is. Yeah, that's a big. I was just thinking so as you. Percentages, you know, percentages are only at the very end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh, it is a big move for I'm you. Making some big changes and looking forward to those, and I think they'll be good for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to the adoption of the water and sewer budgets. <coughs> Every year we have to adopt the budget for water and the budget for sewer. Um, we need to do uh, more work in terms of rates at another time, but by charter we have to have an adoption of the budget as it was presented um, and amended during the workshops. And you have a copy attached to your agendas and I'll entertain a motion of the adoption of the water and sewer budgets that has been discussed um, for fiscal year 2018-2019 as outlined on the attached of the resolution in the amount of $1,514,250 in the water budget and $1,141,105 in the sewer budget be and are hereby adopted. Is there a Motion to approve. Uh, so moved. Do you need me to read it or just do you want me to read the resolution or are we good? Um, it's no, either way is fine. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, I guess I move that the water and sewer budgets for fiscal year 2018 to 2019, as outlined on the attached, um, in the amount of $1,514,250 in the water budget and $1,141,000. $141,105 in the sewer budget 
B and are hereby adopted. Second it. <coughs> Seconded by Ralph. <coughs> Any discussion? Aren't okay. we still way off? I'm sorry? Um, aren't the numbers still going to be way off if last year's, let's see, the actual expended was 1100040 <coughs> It shows. Uh, and I think you alluded to that, saying we're going to talk about this at a different time, but when are we going to talk about that to get them? There is a committee that has yeah. been formed, and the committee, um, I think, will be discussed a little bit later, Ben, uh, in terms of when they'll start meeting so that we can uh, get to work on many of the projects associated. The charter requires that this be passed before May 1. Yeah, and, and the Water and Sewer Subcommittee, which we formed, I believe, uh, in our last meeting, or which is going to be Ralph, myself, and Mr. Shar. Um, we will be looking at rates as well as other things that we need to do. Right now, we know that we are, according to the current run rates, a little bit in the black on water. Yep. Um, so we retired, I think, eleven thousand dollars in debt um, in, in the last fiscal year, or as well the current fiscal year, and we are about eighty thousand dollars a year in the red according to that. So we need to address that and bring those into balance. Uh, that's a topic that when I attend the Water and Sewer Commission meetings that is obviously hot on everyone's uh, mind. It's an important thing for us to care for, as well as other topics and items we're going to have to look at. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just because we also have to pay back. How much do they owe the town Water and Sewer right now? It's got to be, what is it, 800 I think in total it's a little higher than that. I think in total it's... 900 I can't remember. It's a big number, and I just know that we've got to start putting a plan together that's going to yes. start balancing this so yeah yep. sounds like we have a plan sounds good anybody else <coughs> all in favor aye. 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 aye any opposed any abstentions motion carries thank you the next is action on amendment number five to the agreement for engineering services by and between town of portland connecticut and weston and samson engineers Incorporated, which is the Route 17 recreational complex. And the selectmen were presented with this amendment. And <clears throat> I have had some discussions as well as our liaisons to the committee. And I think um, Jim has a recommendation in regard to this amendment. Jim? Yeah, th there's really there's three tasks that are included in this amendment. Um, they're labeled 2.6, 2.7, and 2.8. 2.6 is the bid phase services, which we've just um, gone through and gotten um, some bids that are currently still being evaluated. Then there's a category that's looking at um, other uh, other services, and then so another the other line item is um, flood certification. The fact is, uh, we're, there's still some ongoing discussions about both 2.7 and 2.8, um, so those are not finalized yet. So my recommendation would be to um, basically to allocate payment on task 2.6 in the amount of $15,500 for the bid faith services. Is there a second to that? Well, second. Wait, wait. Oh, wait a second. Oh. Well, hang on. How if much? you want discussion, you yeah. Well, well there's a motion made, so I okay. asked for a second. And then Ralph did. has seconded, so discussion. Okay. And I didn't hear Ralph. First. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> um, how, what was the amount, Jim? All right, the bid phase services were 15500 Okay. Um, that was everything from the doc prep, um, the pre-meetings, uh, right through bid evaluation, reference checks, uh, some of that due diligence, which is kind of still in its, getting more towards its conclusion right now. Attachment oh. A1, scope of services, bid phasing services, um, the engineer has performed the following tasks during the construction document phase, developed front end specs for the project, provide to owner for review and comment, coordinated with owner to receive and incorporate review comments on draft front end specs, provided to owner final front end specifications as a separate volume of the project manual and incorporated into final bid documents. And then task 2.6.2, the bidding phase services, which is the engineer performed the following tasks during the bidding phase that coordinated with the owner to develop an advertisement for bidding provided to the owner for publication, which has been done, contract documents provided to an internet-based bid management provider from which documents are viewed electronically downloaded or procured by potential bidders, that's been done, 
management of the document distribution, registration of bid document holders, payment for document procurement shall be provided by this online service provider, which has occurred. Through the online document provider, issue additional information to bidders as required during the bidding period, which has ended. Coordinate with the owner to schedule the pre-bid meeting, which was done, and assist the owner in securing and tabulating bids, which has occurred. In the review and analysis of bid results, which they're in the process of still doing, and providing an opinion based on information obtained through the bidding process as to the most qualified bidder's suitability for award of the construction contract, which we're undergoing now with Weston and Sampson, and then they will perform the formal contract documents for execution by the owner and the successful bidder, here and known as the construction contractor. So we have not um, gone into the other tasks as far as the amounts. I'm asking for some change in the amounts because there's some discrepancy, Rick, in task 2.7 and task 2.8 that we still need to have resolved. I think it's nearly done, but not. So are all, all three tasks are 50,700? That's right. And then <coughs> of that two point task, 2.6 <coughs> is 15,500? 15, 15, yeah, correct, 15,500. And, and the remainder of that, there may be some changes, there's some discussion on, on those line items. So we're not looking to authorize that now. Just what we know has been done and, and where we're confident. Now, is this within our bonding budget? Yes. Or? Okay, yep. so this, this was pretty much anticipated. Yes. Uh, yeah, this is anticipated. This was one of the phases. The first page gives you the breakdown. But, but my question, if you're done, if you're done there. Okay. Yeah. Um, Susan, on the, yep. <coughs> the 2.8.1, what, what, what are they doing for the preparation for the flood management well now that, <coughs> now that DEP is not requiring a hydraulic model how do you know that because it says it right here detailed hydraulic mo model is not required as part of this certificate however if deep it's the opinion of the engineer that a detailed hydraulic model is not required however if deep requires a hydraulic analysis these services can be provided as an amendment so well, <coughs> what this says per conversation with the meaning. It's the opinion of the engineer, and I believe the engineer well, he's, is them. Yeah, and he, but he's stating per conversation with Connecticut, D-E-E-P. Mm -hmm. It's the opinion. I, I just want to have a better <coughs> sense if that is correct. Um, what they told okay. me today, Ben, is that likely, and they showed me something from deep, they won't <coughs> have to do an individual permit, but they'll be able to follow and go under the general permit for the flood certification, which would be a lot less expensive than the okay. $10,200 listed here. Okay. So I told the engineer, or it's actually a landscape architect from Weston Sampson, to get back to me and let me know how much is stricken from that $10,200. Okay, we're on the same page. That's and then, uh, just to continue, Within the additional services, which is task 2.7, same thing. I asked them to go back and look at this again uh, because I think some of this we may have already had them do under another portion of the contract, perhaps, but I asked them to reduce that amount as well. But the bidding services were pretty clear. They performed yeah. three quarters of that. No? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I do not want the board to approve 2.7 or 2.8 at this point because I believe those numbers are going to change. Yeah, we, Jim and I both believe both numbers will be going down. So <laughs> we're waiting for them to give us the lower numbers. <laughs> okay. And I, I'll also point out that Weston and Sampson had sent this to us previously, but I waited because I wanted to see the bids and how they came in. And the bids have come in. They're being reviewed. There is a low bid that appears to meet our budget, um, but there's still work that needs to be done to um, make sure that it is a solid bid for the project. But it does look very encouraging. Good. So that's why I'm bringing this to you tonight and didn't bring it to you months ago. Is the low bidder somebody you have confidence in and worked the, with? The, or no, or? The, lower, the lowest bid um, is Dorita Construction with public information. Yep. Um, they're a Middletown company. 
and I have not worked with them, but I know that members of the committee are aware of their work, and their references are being reviewed, and they're coming back positive. But the numbers is where the, the, uh, the details need to be yeah. sharpened. Motion for the fifteen thousand five hundred second and Well, <laughs> further discussion. Is, is there a reason why, even though they're only three quarters of the way through the cap on two point six, why we're approving payment now? You said that there were still a few things that were underway. Did you want to make sure those were completed before you? I, I think they're nearly complete. Do you want to comment on that, sir? Yeah, they're, <coughs> they're nearly complete. Um, you know, there's, there's a, a good portion of that work that is already complete. It's not, it, I, I don't think there's any risk at this point. You know, they're, they're effectively, these processes that they're working on are effectively complete. They're just about done with all the review, the references. Um, there's a lot of confidence in, you know, with, with <coughs> what's going to be the recommended um, awardee. There's just some final evaluation that's going on with the proposals and, and looking at that. So, in all essence, they're complete, and it's appropriate, I would think, to pay them, or, or at least authorize paying them at this point, uh, so they can be paid promptly. Have they billed us? Have they billed the town? Or no, not no. until this contract, not until this amendment this. is approved. Oh. Okay. I'm, I'm comfortable yeah. with voting on it, and as long as Susan has a comfort level releasing it, I'm mm -hmm. fine. They haven't billed us yet, but th this is what, not only have they <coughs> almost <coughs> finished, but this is what we agree that they should complete for this figure. But the other figures we need to fine tune. So I think, like, just to follow up with what Angela is asking, we're authorizing payment, <coughs> but our for when this task. We, for this task. But when will the town actually pay them? Like, is it like a week or two down the road? In other words, we have to authorize it, but the check does the check go out? No. no. They have to have an invoice first. They have to yes. invoice us. Yes. So, so in effect, Correct. they're not actually right. being no. paid right. yet. We're, not We're just paying. authorizing them to be paid when we get the invoice. And, and I didn't get That's into the nitty gritty, me. but with this, if we're really, if we're the ones pushing to scrutinize more, we're putting a little more on them at the at the tail end, and we should mm -hmm. if we want to scrutinize sure. the last vendor. We look good for that, but I, I have no issue. They're not going away. We're not going away. We, yeah, we're in effect contracting with them to do work that they've three quarters already completed. Yep. And I so. talked to uh, Dan Biggs today, and I asked him for some additional information on 2.7 and 2.8, and he will. <clears throat> he gave me some of the information, but as of 4:30, I hadn't gotten enough to bring here. So, as a close of business, I didn't have enough. So we'll bring it back to you. But he's been fully cooperative in trying to get me more information. Did we take the vote? No, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> no. We're ready. Yet. Are you ready for the vote? Sure. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. So I will tell them that that portion of this amendment, which is 2.6, has been approved. But the others will bring back to you. <coughs> the next item is refund of excess payments. Jim? Uh, sure. Um, I'd like to make a motion to refund. Um, $2,940 to Brett and Joanna Betkoski Herzog. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Status and committee reports? Probably the, um, yeah, pro just a couple uh, quick items. As, as, well, we already talked a little bit about the fact that the water and sewer right. uh, water <coughs> subcommittee were going to be having a meeting just to get uh, basically organized in the committee and to start looking at the tasks we have to, to, to uh, address. Um, so that's going to be happening. And then uh, just a quick note from the sidewalks. Um, the bid opening was today for the sidewalks. Um, so those bids are in and uh, being evaluated right now. So um, we should have some good, some good bids, but everything's still under evaluation, so we don't want to really get too much deeper into that. I can tell you that um, seven bids came in. Well, that's good. So yeah, it was a lively uh, opening, which is good. Yeah, it's good. Really good. But Tom.
Tom will uh, Tom and Rick and our engineering consultant will go through those. Um, public comment. Okay, we'll go in, we'll go into informal discussion or go back. <clears throat> Norm Ward, speaking as a member of the Water and Sewer Commission. <clears throat> I was extremely disappointed to hear tonight <clears throat> that discussion on a water and sewer race was going to be discussed at another time. How much further in the future can we push off our discussion of water and sewer rates? I know we have new members on the board here. I hear tonight we have a new committee set up. What is taking so long for us not to diligently and eagerly be working and discussing our water and sewer rates that are so necessary to bring up to date? Um, I just don't understand how we can postpone it so, so long. <clears throat> the Water and Sewer Commission has sent a memo to the board asking for rate increases. We have no feedback that I'm aware of at all from this board. Now, Jim joined us a couple of minutes ago. Even, I don't believe this board is aware of our memos asking for a rate increase. And we talked about communication earlier tonight. We need to communicate and discuss this in a lot better manner. I don't think it's fair to the people of Portland to keep putting off our water and sewer rate increase. We know we have a deficit in both water and sewer. When are we going to address and pay off that, that deficit? Homes are being sold. If brand new water customers, new homeowners are coming in, they're going to bear the burden of the prior year's deficit. And the old owner is skipping town. What a nice benefit that is. If we don't increase our rates and I sell my home, I'm not going to bear any burden of an increased water rate after I sell my home. But that deficit was for years past. That's going to be passed off onto the new customer, the new owner, I believe, unless we absorb that cost town wise, but I don't think that's what we're going to do. We have to increase our water and sewer budget, and that would affect the water rate people. So if we cripple our rate <coughs> next year, and we should have been increasing it in the last two, three years, we're putting the burden on new owners. But the main point I want to bring up, when are we going to strongly discuss water and sewer rates? It has been put off, put off, put off, and put off. It's been years. We don't even get a response. I, I do want to. I do want to comment. Um, yep. Um, rates were raised 12 percent, and I believe 11 percent. And I don't quote me on those numbers, but I know that's what the last rate adjustment was. And in terms of rates, they will be discussed by this board. Um, last meeting, we established a committee. This is the Water Authority and the Sewer Authority, so there is a committee, as Jim pointed out. You know what my point is, why and so I wanna, late? I, I want to also say that in terms of rates, the board has to um, study, appoint the, or recommend the rates, then it has to go to a public hearing, and then only after a public hearing can you adopt the rates. So while this board does adopt them as the Water Authority and the Sewer <coughs> Authority, there is a process that we go through, so there is input from the public. I totally agree, Susan, but, we're, but we're, not, we're not addressing that process. Sure. We're putting that process, in my feeling, Norm, the numbers, I could be wrong. <coughs> the numbers you're using in, in saying we need a, a rate increase, are, are, are you not counting the money that's not paid? Well, everything's a, everything is a part of our deficit. If we're not going after our delinquent customers for, and we address that at our committee meeting. No, what I'm getting at is, it, I believe it's, I think, uh, quoting Tom, at 180 or $200,000 that we haven't collected. 
I have, don't. If we if we were able to collect that, would we not need a, an increase? These are the these would be well, the yes, questions. Those are the kinds of questions. Yes. These are uh, number but one, number two. Hang on, that was I, my first question, Norm. So if we were if we had the ability to collect better, would there then not be a rate increase? Would be my first question, and I think it would be close. Number one, number two, have we looked into? And I mentioned this to Susan in a previous meeting, where we have a lot of stormwater getting into the sewer system, that is then becomes a burden to only the sewer customers and that's not fair either so have we done a test to see how many gallons are being infiltrated into the sewer system from stormwater and there is a cost to that and that cost shouldn't just go to the sewer customers that would be an overall town of portland cost so i'm going to want a few things answered i think those are big numbers i think they're going to be bigger than you think and then there may not be a rate increase needed but we may we may need to implement better ways to collect it quicker ways to collect it whatever these can be the conversations but i don't think it's just give us a rate increase that's the answer because i'm not sure we're there yet. no no that, i'm new i agree I'm relatively new so well, I no mean, you've been you've been here more than but six months that's true my point is we need to we need to address that issue we need to find out where we're at. We need to come up with these answers. We need to study it and and go through our proper procedure. But I don't see any I don't see that moving very fast. And it's been addressed on prior members of this board. And now it's coming up again. Oh, we'll discuss it at another time. When are we finally gonna discuss it and address it and move forward? So we got all kinds of Norm. And I, yep. I know the committee is, I thought they were going to try to get a date tonight. Yes. But here we go at another date. Thank you. That's Thank what you. Have to do. Well, why did we approve All the right. Order? If you want to make comment, okay. um, Angela, could you go? During public comment, you need to go up to the microphone. Uh, sure. Yeah. It's easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> and just tell Laura your name. Uh, Angela Hammond, just wondering why, you, I know you said there was a May 2nd deadline. May 1st. May 1st to approve the water, but I think what Norm is getting at is why are we here at the end of April when we knew we had a May 2nd deadline? Why hadn't we discussed these things back in January or February? There right? were some discussions. Um, we typically will adopt the budget and then um, this board will have to determine the rate structure. Um, the water and sewer rates were um, increased very recently within the last, I want to say, two and a half years. I, I don't have the dates exactly. I think that's about right. And we um, evaluated the effectiveness of those rates. Um, water has been very effective and sewer <coughs> needs additional work. We had a water and sewer subcommittee of this board and many of those members are no longer on the board. So it's important that we have new membership and we will be proceeding. Can I make a new Certainly. We also have a new director that's gonna be helping us. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, <coughs> no more again. The increases we did two, two and a half years ago, that was only to get our current operating budget and balance. It did not address our prior year deficits. If and that's my understanding, and okay. I could be totally wrong. Okay. So and that's why I feel discouraged that we're not addressing that deficit more eagerly and diligently. Yes, we had an increase of twelve, whatever it was. It's a hefty number. But it only by my understanding it took care of us for our current year operating Budgets. So at least they were in balance current year. Nothing to do with our previous deficit. Well, the, the, <clears throat> fortunately, within water, there is some mitigation because the rates did have the effect of mitigating the deficit. Now, not in a large degree, right. but um, those rates were effective. I mean, I have asked um, the committee, and I'll be working with them, to look at not just um, the current rate structure and increasing per 100 cubic feet rates. <coughs> but we need to look at how the whole system in terms of rates is charged, uh, particularly, Norm, as we're seeing some new development within our water and sewer district. 
and I would like to seriously have the committee look at um, how those rates are determined for the large Brainerd Place um, facility that will be coming online very soon. I agree. <clears throat> but we just there's can't keep what we, my point is there's more to it than just I know but we I, I totally agree <clears throat> and there's no easy fix no easy answer but we need to work on it I agree. and we need to move ahead we can't keep waiting for branded place to come in and say oh, no, there's our Esther to it no, no but I'm just saying that, I don't want you to no no I'm not I but I'm saying course now going to help us out we're gonna add 280 more but what I'm talking about is not just that facility but there's others that we hope um, will come on within the water and sewer district and how that that is determined you know in terms of rates and fees we need to look at these things that that was my only point right and and I, hate we to bring, I hate to bring up one more pet peeve sure <clears throat> on spring street i know us all everything was done legal everything was was in the referendum but we're paying we're going to pay a million dollars out for a water main replacement in a residential area, and the general taxpayers are going to pay in that million dollars. So the water and sewer fund can't afford it. Why are we starting to have the general taxpayers pay for water and sewer replacements? Nobody comes out to the people that's on septic and wells. The town doesn't come out with general taxation to help then people pay for their repairs and upgrades. It, it, it seems like we just go further and further behind. I understand we even <clears throat> changed things up at the reservoir. We had an $85,000 expense on the dam that should have been in the water fund that got paid for by general taxation. So we're, we're re doing our accounting on how we account for these items because we know we have a deficit but that's why we need to address it we have a major major problem it seems I'm not happy about general taxpayers paying a million dollars for water main replacement on Spring Street and I've spoke to the board before about that our referendum wasn't clear we never mentioned on that referendum at the vote for any water or sewer infrastructure wasn't mentioned at all I know a backup I know a public yes it's in a it's in our printout it's in our backup but it wasn't mentioned at all on the referendum that the people went to vote it was no three words water and sewer infrastructure on that referendum I think that's not being transparent and that's what really upsets me it just seems to be getting it's just out of control I think and we need to truly address a sincere problem I got my home insurance bill that went up 12 percent every year we have an increase rates for over two years not even three percent a year people can't afford it we can't afford not to have an increase in my opinion Thank I'd you. rather I'd rather increase our rates every year at three four percent then try to get them all at once for 28 30 percent increase I, I i think it's just ridiculous to keep putting them off thanks thank you so i have a question regards to that well, I, I just oh. want to point out that this is public comment this is not on the agenda um i don't want to if there's questions we certainly can under informal discussion but this is not a topic that is on our agenda so i just want to point that out as the chairman of the committee the question course. is with regards to the dam now I don't remember the status I, I, if I understood the reservoir is not it's not really in a position to be a backup water source so to say that you use the general funds or not I mean you're covering a dam that's in your town so if I'm wrong I'm wrong I, I just I didn't think it was a. In I that think situation. that's something I I I am so not, not going to allow it, I'm just further discussion on this topic because yes. it's not fair to those people that aren't here because it it's not on the agenda. It, it can be on a future agenda and it certainly will be on the committee's agenda. You are perf perfectly fine. Not a problem. 
No, Norm, I, don't get me wrong. I appreciate your public comment. I don't want the selectmen to start discussing a topic that's not on the agenda. We'll put it on, an, on, an, on another one. Okay. And I'll, I'll get more information on all this for you. So we'll move on to informal discussion. Is there anything? I think um, Rick had mentioned a couple things with Economic Development Commission. I attended the uh, Economic Development Commission meeting on April 10th, and uh, Angela was there as well. Um, and um, they uh, brought me up to, well, they talked about the Brainerd Place update, which um, maybe you're aware of, uh, but if not, um, uh, the traffic plan has been sent out to OSTA to, um, and um, it's a three-part review process um, has to be completed by November of 2008 of this year um, VHB is the traffic <coughs> engineering firm they're using and I've, I've used them before in private work and they they're they're pretty good in my opinion um, let's see, Tegan Bonder signed a contract due to traffic study from the bridge all the way out to Marlboro on Route 66. Um, and let's see, DeMarco Group, I guess, has taken out demolition permits. Um, they're going to start with underground removing some of the old underground tanks, looking at uh, any contamination. Um, and then there was some discussion at EDC about um, wanting to save another small building that has some, I guess, historical significance and maybe relocate it. Um, but I guess there'll be more on that to follow. Um, I don't know if you have anything else on, on what you discussed that night, but um, that's just a little update. The Thank you. committee was well represented, and they s seem to be doing a good job. Good. Um, um, kind of on economic development, um, the land acquisition, the purchase and sale agreement for the property on Brownstone Avenue. Um, that purchase and sale agreement will... Um, expire next week. Uh, that was a 90-day due diligence period, and as I reported at our last meeting, um, we had met with the owner and explained to them that they need to clean the pipe that has oil in it, and they fully understand that. They have not gotten back to us with their plan, so um, my inclination is to let this agreement sunset. Um, because the um, unless you want to extend it, but they have not uh, they have not been able to come forward yet. To me. So I looked it up. Do you have any thoughts on that? I don't think there's enough information for us to extend it at this point, but we'll see. Maybe they'll rush to you in the next couple of days. I, I'll let you know. Um, has there been any? Have you heard anything from them? Or it's just been not silence? since the meeting we had about two weeks ago. Okay. Well, I don't know. It would seem that we were the logical buyer, and even if it expires, once they get things worked out, that I would think they would come back and talk and want to Are we, reopen. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, would, I don't have a problem with that. Um, the only thought in terms of extending it would be is if that helps us in terms of making sure the Brownfields grant um, has something pinned against it so that mm -hmm. that doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. That would be the only thing we'd have to worry about is mm -hmm. that Brownfields grant. So if having mm -hmm. something in, a, uh, in effect and extending it helps protect that, mm -hmm. then I'd, I'd be willing to do the, you know, to extend it. Um, but if there's no real impact, then there's no problem with the sunset. We just have to start over again. What do you want me to do? So 
So I guess the question becomes, what is, you know, to, to Jim's about, point, what's the, harm, what's the harm of extending it? Well, I'll bring it back to you, because I expect to hear back from them. Um, and I will explain that if there's any um, interest in extension, I want to bring it back to this board. Okay. When do we meet again? Um, you may have to have a special meeting, <coughs> because uh, it expires next Wednesday. The contract expires next Yeah. Week. Oh, the 20th. That's like the 25th or something? Yes. Yeah. Oh. So the ball is in their court to get back to the town. So um, it's Wednesday. It's a week away. So I will let you know if I hear from them. Well, if the ball's in their Not court, we should. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with you coming back to us with that. Um, Norm triggered my memory. The other, th another thing that would help uh, in the future is if we can get back online uh, accepting the septic. And I think it's actually in yes. one of our charters that yes. residents on a septic system get a. Well, yes. now it would be considered a reduced rate compared to the surrounding facility. So. Um, yes. I agree. I think yeah. that that helps, it, and I think Susan alluded to it uh, earlier on looking at fee structures, and I think there there should be a, uh, something for users, not just the meter, uh, so units, um, and I think maybe not the same as having a whole separate meter, obviously, but I think these are the things that need to be discussed, and I think yes. they could generate uh, quite a bit of revenue in, in a fair way. In, um, I think then that might get rid of a need for a, an increase potentially. What? We get this the septic thing. What's the, the, what, what our get? sewer plant for a while wasn't bringing in an. Uh, if, if you want, I'll try to. The, Go ahead, from what explain. I heard, it wasn't bringing in enough water to be able to. Well, during the drought. Yeah. During the drought. To dilute the, the septic customers, so they just. You mean when you were dumping the. They, trucks from yeah, they just tanks. refused. They stopped. Uh, that had to be two years ago now. Yes. I think. So they stopped yes. taking. Yeah. The yes. Honey wagons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Which, which did, and I don't know what it generated. Probably not a huge number, but that. It's yeah. it's not small, Ben, and and I think we need to um, reinstitute that. Yes. We we stopped because of the drought, because the concentration of the solids is too much. Um, and it was too difficult for treatment. But now that there is adequate water, and, that, and you know we've <laughs> lots of rain, mm -hmm. um, we need to look at that again. That is also a part of the quote-unquote rate structure because there is a charge for that. So yes, okay. good point. Good point. Anything else? Okay. So I will, um, Michelle or I will get back to you in terms of a. A meeting, it would be a quick meeting, probably early next week, if so inclined, so that we can proceed. Because I want to keep everybody informed on this, as we have already. Okay, I have no other updates, so I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed?